All right, real quick. So I'm gonna do the Hello Waste 2 developer commentary video now. I previously recorded uh, multiple iterations of this, one dating all the way back to October 1st, but then I decided to scrap all of those in favor of recording one when the DLC was finished, which it now is. <clears throat> the DLC's out, the full game's out, I'm probably not gonna update it unless I find some sort of game-breaking bug, which I doubt that I would. Uh, this is the game I've probably play-tested the most by myself, as you know. There were no playtesters, period, besides me, obviously. Now, uh, mildly fun fact, this is the only game I've made since Rise 1 that doesn't support full screen, or isn't, at, or doesn't have a full screen option within the game. Does not matter one bit because A, YouTube automatically scales it to 16x9 if you're watching in full screen anyway, and B, the game is natively in 16x9, so whatever. Now, jumping in to level one here. Every screen in this game has its own music track, by the way. The settings menu, which there is one, you can press this button to reset your data. I did that before I started the recording, so that doesn't matter. Uh, the credits thing, no one play tested this besides me, so no play tester credits. And you can change your controls. I think this is the only game I've made with a setting screen, <laughs> which is weird, but whatever. Jumping into level one. So the player character's name is Gizzard, you can move up, down, left, and right, and you can shoot, that is it. You have six hit points, that's how it works. Speed-wise, this is probably the slowest waste uh, playable to date. The speed of your bullets is also the slowest of any waste game to date, probably. But to compensate, uh, the average projectile the enemies fire moves slower than past waste games, which obviously means you, A, you can dodge them easier, and B, reaction time. This game's probably the easiest waste game to ever be released. Probably, the keyword. I guess FTW is the easiest, but that's just because FTW is not finished, and therefore does not have the harder parts at the end. Anyway, the growths, they take three shots, just like they have since Waste Em. And they use the same death sound as Waste Em. Obviously, the animations are new. Every sprite in this game's new, by the way. I'm fairly sure. Anyway, five levels. Ooh. All the levels look identical, pretty much, by the way. Anyway, this here is the bad shooter. The bad shooter, after four shots, will stand up and start chasing the player. Three more shots will put him down. Bad, the name Bad Shooter is a play on Rad Shooter, because they, they're they functionally similar, but whatever. These are the blinds, they are stationary turret enemies. Technically, they're not the first stationary turret enemies in the series. The Rad Shooters existed, and Git W had the uh, stationary raiders. I have completely forgot to talk about the Ib. The Ib are essentially just slower, tankier growths. They are the least uh, relevant enemy in this entire game. They do not matter in the slightest. Like, at all. Anyway, for the most part, uh, excluding the DLC, the growth is really the only enemy from a previous waste game. There's an asterisk there, we'll get to those. But yeah, the growth is really the only enemy from a previous waste game, at least in the traditional sense. Obviously, the Rad Shooter is a reference to a previous waste enemy, but he looks completely different. And overall, his mechanic is different to the Rad Shooters. He just fills a similar role. Now, Stage 3 introduces no new enemies, so I guess I'm going to take a second to talk about the production of Hollow Waste 2. Uh, Hollow Waste 2 took 10 days to develop. Start to finish, 10 days, right? Excluding the DLC, which took about 15 days. Uh, that's because I was busy with school uh, and stuff. I had other assignments to do that I had to do. Uh, obviously, this wasn't an assignment, but you know what I mean. I had other things to do at that time, and I was planning what the next Waste game would be. The Hollow Waste 2 DLC was just kind of a filler thing at that time, because, you know, it's an extra five levels with a few new enemies. I'll talk about that when I get to it. But production-wise, there were no playtesters in this game. And other than what Gizzard looked like, the player, and what the growth looked like, you know, the growth, which both of those things were kind of inevitable, which is why they were revealed. Uh, 
nothing about this game was revealed before it came out. The trailer released, I'm pretty sure, within 24 hours of the game releasing. Obviously before, but, but you know what I mean. Same day, essentially. So technically something was revealed, but like, who cares? <laughs> Anyway, yeah, the game released on October 1st, and I think the DLC released on the 16th, 15th? Something like that. Rise 1 still has the fastest DLC turnaround, but that's because I started to work on Lithidus before the game even released, so... Mm. I don't think I started coding Lithidus, but he was drawn and some of his animations were done before the game released. <clears throat> In terms of scrapped content, uh, Hallowais 2 technically has some. The DLC was supposed to be 10 stages long at some point. I never said that publicly until after I scrapped the other five levels from the DLC. But uh, yeah, it was supposed to be 10 stages. And then I decided that the new mechanics, those extra five levels introduced, did not need to be shoehorned into the last five levels of Hallowais 2. Like we're talking uh, keys that you had to pick up to unlock the doors sub weapons stuff like that i decided to save that for a future game that being the next waste game whatever that happens to be greed's in the waste poison cough cough but uh yeah technically that content's not scrapped as number one it never made it past the concept phase technically and two it is quite literally being put into the next waste game anyway I just decided that it wouldn't be a fit for a game as simple mechanically as Hollowways 2. Now here we have the next new enemy type, the stack. It's kind of a weird place to put the uh, last new enemy type of the game, right before the exit, which is right here of the game's last level before the boss, because the game only has one boss, but whatever. You know, the stack takes nine shots, and uh, yeah, then it's revealed that he was a growth in a trench coat. The reason he's called the stack is that originally it was supposed to be three growths in a, in a uh, trench coat, stacked one on top of the other, you know, the whole like tall person thing, uh, that whole tall person trope kid thing where kids would be hide in a trench coat stacked on top of each other to look like an adult. That was the joke. Forgot to mention this, but whenever you get close to an exit, uh, it opens up, so that's neat, I guess. Anyway, final boss time, the makeshift. Now, the makeshift is based off of a scrapped enemy uh, from Wastem. That enemy was drawn, but it never made it past the conceptual level. I'm not even sure what it was supposed to do mechanically. Now, the makeshift has three moves. That spiral move, it has 50 health. Uh, second move is summoning a flap, kind of neat that I made an enemy exclusive to the boss, but whatever. The flaps are essentially just ranged raiders. Anyway, the makeshift was supposed to appear in the, up here in the factory level of Wastem, so yeah, that's where this thing comes from. There's its weird shotgun burst attack. Yeah, that's everything the makeshift does. This is one of those things where, uh, like I said earlier, the asterisks behind it being a new enemy, because it's ba it design-wise is quite different to the version uh, from Wastem. But A, if you saw them side by side, you'd know that this was that. And B, it's based off of an enemy, but still, an enemy that never appeared in an actual Waste game. Anyway, congratulations, you've beaten the makeshift, but you're only halfway done. Proceed to stage six. Now, uh, that's the whole joke, is that when you start up the game, there's only five icons on the level select. There's actually ten levels in base Hollowways 2. So, level six, which makes the flaps regular, uh, reoccurring enemies now. So that's neat. This here is a grip. A grip is a faster growth that takes one extra shot to kill. One shot less than a uh, ib, by the way. By the way, for the DLC, whenever that was in production, I rebalanced a lot of the enemy types uh, in the game. So flaps, 
uh, now take five shots instead of their uh, six they originally took. Bad shooters originally took ten. There's an enemy type later that took that uh, took eight that now takes uh, seven. The stack originally took twelve instead of nine. I decreased most of the enemy health. Is what I'm saying. Grow the growth. Uh, the Ib, I think, and, and the uh, Blind are pretty much the only base game enemies not to have their healths modified in any sort of way. The Grip also did not have their health modified. Now, if you want to play the original version of Hollow Waste 2, you can go to my Game Jolt page. I'm not linking that in the description, because, nah. but just look up Hollow West 2 on Game Jolt and look for the Legacy Edition. That'll be the original version of the game that released with all of the bugs that that implies. And it also has the original uh, versions of all the enemies. Obviously, it doesn't include the DLC, but whatever. That's essentially, since balance wise, it's a very different thing. Since I made so many changes in the DLC, I decided it'd be, it would be best to. Uh, have those separate. So, yeah, if you want to see how Hollow West 2 fared when it released, you can do that. I'm just gonna skip past these dudes. Whenever you touch an exit and there's enemies on screen, they all die, so that's neat, I guess. Stage 7 introduces The Fiend. Now, The Fiend was originally supposed to be the hardest regular enemy in the game. It had 8 health, now it only has 7, and then it does this shotgun blast thing. It's also the second fastest enemy. Uh, because of how few of them there are, uh, they're not really too big of an issue overall. I, th I still think the Grips are the worst enemy to deal with. I like the Grips a lot, though. Same with the Fiends. The Fiend and the Grips are probably my favorite enemies. My least favorite's the Stack. This thing right here is just obnoxious to fight. It's not difficult because of how slow its projectiles are, but like... It just takes forever, because every growth it summons essentially just function as extra hit points for it because they block it from, uh, they block it from you, so, mm. <clears throat> Pretty much every projectile enemy, with the exception of the blind, can be killed before they fire off the projectile. I say that like there's a crazy high amount of projectile enemies, there's three. But yeah, you can kill a fiend before it gets a shot off. Since it only takes seven, even when it had eight, you could do it. <clears throat> the flap you can kill before it gets a shot off too. By the way, the grip's hitbox is is is, is uh, just his body. It's not his hand. A lot of the uh, enemies in this game have smaller hitboxes than they appear to have. That's on purpose because they just have these protrusions off their bodies. A lot of them do that really should not cause the player damage if they get touched by them. Anyway, no new enemies until until the uh, DLC levels. So stage eight here, which I'm pretty sure this yeah this is stage eight, and stage nine don't really do anything interesting other than be obnoxious. Now this used to be what I'd consider the hardest room in the game because you have to deal with multiple fiends and multiple stacks. <clears throat> the caveat being, number one, bad shooters got nerfed, so you could kill these guys much faster, and just kind of ignore the stacks. Ignoring the stacks is easy. Ignoring the fiends, not really, because of how relatively fast they are, you still move faster, so there's an option for getting away. You can also damage boost the rad shooters, so it's not even that difficult, as long as you didn't get hit throughout the uh, earlier parts of the levels. Now here we have stage 9, which is the hardest level, not room, but level in the game. I still think that this is the hardest level. <clears throat> now your instincts would uh, lead you to believe that you're supposed to fight the flaps here, in this room here. Don't do that. It's actually easier to fight the fiend here 
after killing the flaps by going back into this previous area and dodging the uh, blind things. Trying to fight him in this tiny area once he's closed the distance and is like right in front of uh, where I'm currently standing. Don't do that. <laughs> You're probably gonna get hit. I got hit twice anyway, so, mm. but still. Final room before the boss. You have to refight the makeshift. Now, when this, uh, when Holloway's 2 originally released, this version of the makeshift had the same number of health as its original counterpart. Now it only has uh, 25 health. So you want to focus on killing the fiends because once you kill all three of them, it essentially just becomes a normal makeshift fight again, but he has less health. <clears throat> Once you kill him, the stage ends, just like stage 5. I personally still think stage 8's uh, final room is harder than this. Uh, unless you try, unless you uh, cheese it by damage boosting through the rad shooters. That's just because I think makeshift is overall a pretty easy fight. I like the boss, I think it's one of the better waste bosses. But like, it's not particularly difficult. And now we move on to the final boss of base Holloway's 2, Blazer. Now the way Blazer works is across the arena, uh, enemies will be spawning from these portals. Typically four, but sometimes three, sometimes five, right? <clears throat> but on average four per wave, and once you kill all four of them, uh, Blazer is able to be hit. It's a pretty gimmicky fight, but I think it works, and since the game has two other traditional bosses, having at least one be weird is fine. Now whenever Blazer's off screen, he will speed up significantly. And every once in a while he'll do that blast attack where he sends out an AOE of projectiles. That uh, attack is not too dangerous since the projectiles are so unbelievably slow. When he's at 8 health, by the way he has 8 health, when he's at 8 health the enemies that are sp that will spawn are just ibs and growths. After getting hit once, he can start spawning grips. After getting hit twice, he can start spawning flaps. And once he's down to his last two hit points, Blazer will start summoning fiends. The grips are the most dangerous just because they aid to the biggest issue of this fight, being cornered. Being cornered by Blazer and the other enemies is the biggest danger in the fight. Blazer's hitbox is fairly small, by the way, at least compared to what you'd expect. Uh, basically, his entire head does not damage you, neither do his arms. It's really just his torso and legs, and the lowest part of his head is part of his hitbox. The reason for that is because, like I said, pointy bits, it'd be stupid if the horns on top of his head could damage you through a wall. Obviously, his body can if it goes through the wall, which it will at some point, but nah. The main uh, thing you want to do here is position yourself in a way that you're unlikely to get cornered. Like I said, that's the biggest danger of the fight. It's not Blazer's projectiles, and until the fiends start spawning, it's not projectiles in general. The only enemy individually, up until the fiends start spawning, that'll give you any trouble are the grips, because you know, they're fast. Every other enemy is relatively passive. <clears throat> Again, until the fiends start spawning. Once the fiends start spawning, uh, you can be in some trouble. Which fiends are about to start spawning. They have pretty much the same chance of spawning as the other enemies, so there's a chance you won't fight any, and there's also the slim chance that you'll fight like four. I haven't heard one make a noise yet, so I think I'm in the clear for this phase, yeah. Nope, there's one. You see, the fiends can shoot some of the fastest projectiles in the game. A lot of their, where their projectiles have random speed, they can also shoot the slowest, so keep that in mind. Not the fastest projectiles in the game, the fastest projectiles of any non-boss enemy. Congratulations, you've beaten Blazer as well as the game. You've unlocked the bestiary as well as the ancient missions. Thank you for playing. Press space to close. Now, these here, the DLC stages use Roman numerals, so one, two, three, four, boss, to 
differentiate them from the uh, base game levels. In reality, they're really just more of the same game, so the final boss is really the guy here instead of Blazer, but I wanted to, you know, keep Blazer sort of as the game's final boss. Now, for beating Blazer, you unlock the game's speciary, which has entries for all of the uh, dudes. I'm gonna go, which it also has its own music, by the way. I'll go back there once I beat the uh, DLC stages so you can see all the DLC enemies. Beating the boss of the DLC unlocks all of the entries for the DLC enemies. So yeah. This is the foil, or proto-foil, I guess technically. Every time you shoot one, it gets faster. Its base speed is quite slow. I think it takes like five shots. Yeah. The uh, DLC enemies are uh, interesting because I didn't really play test them all that much. I just kind of pulled them in and hoped for the best. And like the DLC itself hasn't really been complained about by the like one person who's played it, and maybe two. I don't know if Patch has played the DLC or not. I know he's downloaded Halloways too, but he hasn't said anything about it. So yeah. I know CK's played the DLC though. The DLC's fine overall, it's just more Hollow Waste 2 levels, so whatever. Now this right here, uh, this looks kind of like a glitch, the grip running underneath here, but it's very intentional. You see, at some point in base Hollow Waste 2, after I finished base Hollow Waste 2, I changed how enemies were triggered, so once they're not touching fog anymore, they're permanently aggroed. Originally, the enemies, anytime they were touch, uh, touch of the fog, they would just go back into their passive state. But whenever, now that the uh, changes are made, if an enemy isn't touching fog, permanently aggroed, meaning that they can just walk through fog now. So that right there was a demonstration of that. It was an intentional demonstration of that. But whatever. Now here's a random room where I was experimenting with changing the camera. Uh, it's more zoomed out here for some reason. Yeah, it's also a bit laggy because of the sheer amount of enemies that loaded at the exact same time. Now this stage introduces the proto curse. The deal now the uh, deal with the proto curse is that he's designed after the OG, the curse from the OG waste instead of the Hollow Waste curse. You see, the Hollow the version of uh, curse in Hollow Waste was not designed after this guy in any way. It was a CKOC that he didn't have a name for, so slap the name of this guy onto that. And I thought it'd be funny if I did the uh, reverse. Take uh, Hollow Waste Curse is a gameplay mechanic and slap it onto this guy <laughs> to go full circle, but whatever. The gameplay mechanic of the original Curse did not, uh, from the OG Waste did not function like this. He was supposed to be an NPC that sold items. I scrapped that idea pretty early on because it's the worst thing ever, but whatever. <clears throat> Not necessarily the fact that an NPC sold items, but just getting that to work is pretty much always annoying, and I realized I did not think that, that was uh, worth it, so I scrapped that feature entirely. Could I do it? Uh, back then, probably not. Now, probably. I'm not going to, but I could. Anyway, the deal with the curse, they take like eight hits, I think. Seven. Uh, they take like seven hits and they go through walls. Anyway, this here is the Proto Clanker. The Proto Clanker takes like six shots to kill. Uh, it moves. It's probably the easiest the Clanker's ever been, but once it starts moving, it will not stop until it hits the player. And then it'll go back into its standard state. Functionally, that's very different from how the clanker usually works. The clanker usually dashes in a straight line and stops when it hits a wall instead of pursuing the player and only stopping once the player gets hit. That's to compensate for this being the least tanky the clanker's ever been. It only takes six shots to kill. For reference, the, se the second weakest clanker, the one from FTW, took seven shots, but that version of the clanker was only the third enemy introduced in the entire game, so... Eh. Excluding bosses, I guess. Technically, Fink was introduced before the uh, Clanker and from the Waste, but whatever. <laughs> this Clanker's introduced in stage 
three of the DLC, 13 overall, so, yeah. Here we have this room filled with some of the more annoying enemies in the game. What you're supposed to do is just touch the exit in the center since you have a free shot at it and kill all of the most annoying enemies in the game. That's what that's for, but whatever. It's a cute little uh, stress reliever thing, I guess. But stage four. Now stage four takes a room from a bunch of previous levels, six levels total, and just replaces the enemies in them with harder enemies. No music track, though. It doesn't use the music tracks from those previous levels. This, by default, makes it, like, the longest level in the game. But whatever. That first room was taken from level 1. I believe this one was taken from level 6. Since the entire enemy, enemy roster has been introduced by this point, enemies that weren't previously in those rooms are in these. I believe this is stage 8. No, it's not. No, this is stage uh, 2, I'm pretty sure. I think this is stage 7, could be wrong. I forgot to mention this, the blind are women, these things. So like, do with that what you will. Yes, that is the way that is the reason their thighs were drawn the way they were. <laughs> Ugh. I usually don't do that for enemies in games, but like I was like, eh, screw it, I'm bored. So I did it. Not a lot to say about this level, just like the, uh, just like some of the levels from the base game. No new enemies are introduced here, so it's just kind of a gauntlet of every regular enemy in the game. Since the final boss of the DLC, and I guess only boss, doesn't summon enemies. So I wanted to use- every enemy is used in this stage, at least once, by the way. Except the, uh, bosses, obviously. <laughs> and now we move on to the boss of the DLC, Bulby Exit Man, which, uh, <laughs> there's a reason he's called that, kind of, but whatever. Anyway, he has four projectile-based moves, that's it, and he moves in a path. It's a very, it's probably the most simple boss in the game from, like, a, uh, actual depth standpoint. You just kind of avoid the things he sends at you and that's it since unlike he's probably even technically more simple than makeshift since he doesn't summon any enemies or anything the gro the uh, skull things he fires are pretty much just big projectiles so it's pretty much just a shotgun blast aoe thing a second shotgun blast aoe thing that goes actually in the direction of the player a spin thing and then throwing the skull that's it Again, since he doesn't sp summon enemies like the makeshift does, he's technically uh, less mechanically interesting, I guess, even though he has an extra attack. What I'm saying here is that technically there's little to no depth here. You just kind of dodge the thing that he throws when he throws it. You don't have to worry about positioning, really. You just dodge the attacks. I think it works. Uh, I think it's harder than makeshift. I don't think it's harder than Blazer, but that's just because psychologically Blazer's completely different to everything else in the game. Anyway, he has 75 health, by the way. Congratulations, you've beaten Beelzebub. Uh, you've unlocked entries for the ancient enemies in the game's bestiary. There's nothing left to do. Thanks for playing. See you in Greeds in the Waste 2. We're gonna get to, like, the whole Bulby Exit Man thing. It's weird. So, there's Gizzard's entry. 
There's the Growth's entry. There's the Ibs entry. There's the Bad Shooter's entry. There's the Blinds entry. There's the Stacks entry. There's the Flaps entry. There's the Makeshift entry. There's the Grip's entry. Hold on. Nah, never mind. I thought uh, one of their descriptions mentioned Gogs. I guess I forgot to mention Gogs in their descriptions. Eh. Anyway, there's the Grip's entry. There's the Fiend's entry. There's Croker's entry. I forgot to show off Croker, I guess. <laughs> eh, whatever. There's Blazer's entry. Anyway, Blazer is a reference to Felbus, who was the original scrapped final boss from, uh... FTW, that weird Metroidvania waste game thing. Felba, uh, Blazer will later canonically become Felbus, whatever. Telltaker's entry, which this was the original last entry of the book in in the Halloween 2's base game. So, yeah. Telltaker's the guy who canonically writes all of the Beast Jerry and Journal entries like he did in FTW. So, yeah. Now the DLC enemy is Beast Jerry entries. There's Protofoil, Proto Curse, Proto Clanker. Growth Ghost, you know, the skull things, Bulby Exit Man fires, and Bulby Exit Man's entry. Now, Bulby Exit Man, the reason it keeps uh, calling him Beelzebub sometimes, and Bulby Exit Man sometimes, Bulby Exit Man is the alias, Beelzebub is what he really is. There you go. And then, if you press the D key one more time, you get a teaser for Greeds in the Waste Noise, which is the next waste game I plan on making. So that's neat, I guess. Now, uh, I guess I'm going to show off Croker. The easiest way to do that would be to go into the Blazer fight, I guess. Croker is the game over screen. It says Croaked at the top. There's a frog jumping on you. Yeah, that's the deal with Croker. A unique theme technically plays on this, mu on this uh, game over menu too, but whatever. That's always two. I think it's the best waste game to date. Doesn't have much competition, considering there's only been three released ones. But whatever. 